what's up? I'm Liz, this is Today DIY, and today I'm gonna to be taking a look at the Ardu Boy. Now, you may have heard of the Ardu Boy, but just in case, it's a mini open source gaming system based on the Arduino architecture. It uses the Atmega 32U4 chip, the same as the Arduino Leonardo and microboards. It is sporting 32 kilobytes of flash memory, 2.5 kilobytes of RAM, and a one kilobyte EEPROM capacity, all operating at a frequency of 16 megahertz. The screen is an OLED monochrome, aka black and white, with a resolution of 128 by 64 pixels. For comparison, the original Game Boy had a resolution of 160 by 144 pixels. For sound, it has a piezo speaker that's surprisingly loud, and for power, it has a lithium polymer battery, which the makers say should last you a solid eight hours of gameplay. It also has a handy USB cable for charging, communicating with the device. I also want to take a moment to respect the packaging for the Ardu Boy. As the box, it's just total nostalgia. And I really like how they presented all the specs on the back, like nutritional facts. It's just really cool and you can tell they just really know their audience and really care about their product. Now the Ardu Boy was created to be incredibly small and compact, as you can see it is tiny. They even brag about the size on their site, saying that it compares to a credit card, and as you can see, it totally does. Uh, despite that, I find the buttons to be a comfortable size, at least for me, and they have sturdiness that I wasn't expecting with some really awesome, like, clicky feedback. Um, the size, though, is definitely something to keep in mind, just in case you have giant hands, unlike President-elect Trump. Had to, I'm sorry, I just had to. Now the major appeal of the Ardu Boy is the fact that it's open source, and as a result, people can program their own games and share them with the online community, and then the games are free to download for everyone. This is also a best of both worlds open source experience, since the end user doesn't necessarily have to write their own code to enjoy it, unlike other platforms. They can load up pre-made games like someone would do with ROMs in an emulator and enjoy the system that way. Or of course, they can catch the open source bug and dive right in and write their own games. In both scenarios though, you do have to set up the Arduino IDE or coding interface with the proper settings and libraries, so let's go through that step by step. Okay, so I'm gonna be following along with the Arduboy quick start guide, which I'll link below. Their guide is pretty decent, but since you have to install a library, I think it'll be helpful for beginners to see it in action. Before I get ahead of myself though, first things first. You need to download the Arduino IDE from the arduino.cc website if you haven't already. Arduboy is kindly linked to that page in their guide, and once you get to that page, you'll select whichever distribution is best for your system. I already have it installed, so I'm going to go ahead to step two. Rest assured though, the install for the IDE is very simple, just like any other basic application. I've installed it on both Windows and Mac, and have never had a problem. So now, go back to the Arduboy page where you'll find some instructions for installing the Arduboy library. A library is basically a folder to achieve more functionality with specific pieces of hardware. The libraries are also open source. I'm going to go ahead and install the Arduboy library with my own preferred method though, as I think it's just a little easier than what they have here on the site. First, navigate to the link to download the Arduboy library which is in a zip file and is a bit hidden on their site for some reason. Once you download it, go ahead and unzip it to reveal the library folder, and then we're going to move that folder into your Arduino folder on your system, which is probably located in your Documents folder. Now, when you're in the Arduino folder, you'll see another folder called Libraries, and that's where you're going to drop the Arduboy library folder. You'll see that I have other extra library folders in there which I've installed in the same way. Now I'm going to open up the IDE to make sure the library is showing up as an option with its example sketches. And it is. The library is now available for use. Now we're going to install support for the Arduboy board in the IDE. This is optional as the board will show up as a Leonardo board but I went ahead and did it to avoid confusion just in case I ever found myself using a Leonardo. I also think this is handy for first time users to make things a little clearer. So to do this, you're going to click on File and then Preferences in the IDE. You'll see a box that says Additional Boards Manager URLs. In there, you're going to paste the address shown on the Arduboy page, then click OK. 
Now go to Tools, Board, and then Board Manager. Type into the search box, Arduboy. The board should pop up as an option. Click it, and then click Install. It will quickly install, and after it finishes, click Close. Now to check it, go back to Tools, and then Board, and at the very bottom, you should see the Arduboy as an option. Now we're going to connect the Arduboy to the computer with the included USB cable. If you just plug it in, you'll see the red light come on the board, but nothing populates in your computer's devices. That's because the Arduboy has to be turned on in order for the computer to see it as the programmable Arduino. Wait for Windows to install the device driver, and it should eventually populate as an Arduino Leonardo. Now, jump back into the Arduino IDE, click on the well-traveled tools menu, and now click on port, and select the Arduino Leonardo port. The COM and accompanying number will vary depending on your computer. After that, click on board and select the Arduboy. Now the IDE knows that you have an Arduboy connected and you're ready to start coding or uploading game sketches to your device. So with all that taken care of, you're ready to start loading up games or even creating your own. I personally have zero experience coding games, but there are some really great tutorials on the Arduboy community forum, including how to create those 8-bit graphics. I plan to at least give it a try, and if I come up with something decent, I'll be sure to share it on the community and also in a video here. So overall, I'm pretty pumped on the Arduboy. I think it's a great piece of open source hardware with excellent community support. With how nostalgic everyone currently is for retro gaming, see also the NES Classic, it's definitely being released at the right time. And you can pick it up from a variety of websites, including their own site or at a few third-party retailers as well. But that's all for today's video. If you'd like to toss me a thumbs up, consider subscribing for similar content like this. Leave your questions and comments below. I'd love to hear if others are picking up the Ardu Boy and what people think of the concept. Maybe we can even get some game recommendations from more seasoned owners. You can also find Blitz City DIY on all major social media nonsense. Links are in the description. As always, thank you for watching. And until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.